The Federal Reserve of the United States has less than four days to decide what they're going to do with the effective federal funds rate. As they just recently started their interest rate cutting cycle, in this video, what we're going to talk about is the latest probability of the FOMC rate cuts, what this has to do with inflation, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink saying that we're not going to see interest rates as low as people are forecasting, the reason why the unemployment rate is the most important thing to focus on over the next few months, historically how rate cuts in the unemployment rate has affected the stock market and when we could expect to see a market crash. This billionaire that predicted what was going to happen with Bitcoin when it was just at $1 and now what he's saying about the US economy being on the brink of disaster. This is the end game for the Federal Reserve. The amount of banks that are projected to shut down, collapse and get congregated into larger banks over the next 10 years. We're comparing the stock market to the crypto market specifically. XRP compared to Amazon, Microsoft, other large companies and my price prediction for XRP in the short term, the midterm and then the macro long term. That way you can better understand what's possible for XRP over the next few years compared to some of the largest market cap companies in the world. Where does Ripple stack up with these companies and what am I expecting to happen and where am I positioning my money? I'm going to share all of that with you today. That way you can make the most amount of money possible. So comment 777 if you guys are feeling blessed, if you're feeling bullish, and if you're going to become the first millionaire in your family tree, confirm it by tap on the subscribe button. As always, let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So across the board, the whole crypto market is pulling back five to 15% for a lot of these projects. And so let's dive right into what's happening and what to expect. And is this normal? Is this something to worry about? And what can we expect going into election after election? And then with uh, the Federal Reserve and comparing all this data, you guys are gonna love this video. So let's look at the Bitcoin price chart first on the daily, sitting at $68,000. Bitcoin rallied all the way up to $73,000. And as you guys can see, it was flirting with the all-time high. It couldn't break past the all-time high and go into price discovery. And so we're pulling back. However, we are still in this uptrend forming higher highs. Now there's a few key levels to hold for Bitcoin to maintain this uptrend. The first level is at $65,000 to stay in this channel where we see higher highs and this ascending support as well too, where it would intersect right here, the next level to the downside to maintain the overall uptrend since the um, 5th of August right here would be roughly $58,000. Bitcoin could technically you know break below and i'm not saying this is going to happen i'm just giving you guys an example here but bitcoin could technically break below this ascending support and come all the way back down to like fifty nine thousand dollars and still stay in an uptrend because an uptrend is just a series of higher lows and higher highs so as long as fifty nine thousand dollars holds there's nothing to really worry about in the short term what i'm expecting though is some chop going into election for us to come back down potentially to this ascending support and then bounce off of roughly $65,000. Maybe we dip a little bit lower, flush out a lot of leverage traders before continuing to the upside. Doesn't really matter what happens in the short term because anything that happens for Bitcoin roughly between $59,000 and the all-time high is irrelevant until we either break the resistance of the all-time high or we break the support of $59,000, $58,000 right around where this candle wicked at it the 10th of October. So not a human being on earth knows what's going to happen for Bitcoin in the short term right here, but we can get an idea of what's going to happen in the long term by looking at other macro market indicators such as global liquidity, unemployment, the federal funds rate, and other data that I'm going to share with you towards the middle to the end of this video. But first, I want to dive right into the XRP to the US dollar price chart and talk about what I'm seeing on the chart on the weekly chart right now compared to the past. So as you can see, we've struggled to break the resistance of roughly 75 cents, and we've continuously put in lower highs since the 22nd of July. You can see we didn't even make it up to 75 cents. We made it up to like 68 cents and then like 66 cents. And so the momentum was shifting from bullish ever since the bear market bottom to bearish since the judge decided that XRP is not a secure XRP is not a security on the secondary market. Now going through the appeal with the SEC stacked on top of macro market uncertainty around election right now. And what the Federal Reserve is doing is leading XRP to still follow Bitcoin's price action and even lag behind Bitcoin. So I expect Bitcoin to outperform XRP until we see a shift in dominance. Now let's look at the key indicators 
indicators right here and let's look compared to the past with this stochastic, this stochastic RSI and see what we're seeing. I've shown you guys this in previous videos and it is playing out pretty much to the T. Now, looking back on October of 2016, we saw what's called a bearish cross above 80 on the stochastic RSI. This is when the K line in blue crosses below the D line in orange. When this happens above 80, this is a signal that momentum has shifted over from bullish price action to bearish price action, but it doesn't confirm until both lines cross below 80 to confirm the bearish cross. And what happened last time that we saw this bearish cross confirmed was XRP sold off. Now, on the right-hand side of the screen, I was talking about this back in July of this year, and I said, watch for this. We're seeing a potential bearish cross taking place. In order for it to confirm, it needs to pass below 80. Now, it did, but it's been flirting with 80 until we confirmed it for sure by the end of September. And so this is where XRP was just hovering right here between roughly 50 cents to, you know, 67 cents, not really doing anything until we confirmed this bearish cross. And now you can see where the K line and the D line are at. The D line is at 11. The K line is at 4.78. So well below 80, even below 20. And so XRP's price and this momentum has shifted. Now, what does it look like when this takes place? Well, on the left-hand side of the screen, when we saw this bearish cross take place, we saw XRP sell off all the way down here where the K line and the D line cross below 20 all the way down here on the left-hand side of the screen, we saw XRP's price sell off. Now, after that took place, you guys can see the stochastic RSI stayed below 20 until roughly the middle of March. Now on the right hand side of the screen, it's similar to what we're going through right now, where what I would expect going into election is for the stochastic RSI to stay down below 20. Who knows how long it would do this, but eventually what will happen on the weekly chart is we will see a reversal at some point to the upside. Now, when a reversal takes place on the stochastic RSI, this is what we call a bullish cross. Now, a bullish cross is exactly what you think it is. It's the opposite of a bearish cross. And when a bullish cross takes place below 20, like you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, in order for it to confirm, both the K line and the D line need to cross above 20. Now we saw this confirmed by the 13th of March of 2017, and then the stochastic RSI reversed to the upside when the price bottomed out all the way at 0 0.005, and then absolutely erupted after this. And so I'm expecting something similar for XRP. Now, I don't know how big the breakout's gonna be, as you guys can see, the breakout in 2017 was absolutely insane. It dwarfed all expectations and that liquidity most likely came in from like central banks, big institutional players over in Japan as Ripple was making those partnerships. This liquidity injection right here from February of 2017 all the way up to May of 2017 to 40 cents was a 7,600% growth. That was absolutely ludicrous. This was insane. If if you would have spotted this on the chart, what I'm showing you right now, you could have made a lot of money because then XRP cooled off for a little bit longer and it had one final parabolic blow off top. So what are we expecting to happen in the short term when we look at the right hand side of the screen compared to where we were in the past? Now again, it's not going to be identical, but there are some similarities we can see here. Because the K line is at four, the D line is at 11, the bears are in control right now. And usually when we see the D line and the K line on the stochastic RSI cross below 20 after being above 80 for an extended period of time, we could see this stay below 20 for an extended period of time going into 2025 before we see a bullish cross and then confirm a bullish cross to pass above 20. So you can see my levels on the chart that I'm looking for where I would consider accumulating more XRP. Now I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you what I'm gonna do with my money. I'm not a financial advisor, you should go consult your financial advisor, crypto is very risky. You could definitely lose money in these markets because especially if you're buying right now and XRP's price drops and then you sell at a loss, you're losing money. So these videos are purely for education, informational purposes only. I'm gonna tell you how it is, no sugarcoating. I'm just gonna give you the facts. I'm gonna give you data so that way you can do your own research and then you're a full grown adult here. You can make your own educated decisions and you can control your emotions, okay? I hope that's okay with you, that you have to take responsibility for your own investment decisions. You know, you're not gonna blame me. If I see something on the chart, I'm gonna share it with you. What I'm seeing right now is XRP could potentially come back down to backtest these previous levels of support. 
at the one is at 38 cents to 40 cents the next one is all the way down here at 28 cents to roughly 35 cents before we see a bounce now i'm going to be updating you guys virtually every single day on this channel and so this is playing out exactly as i expect it right now now could we just hold this level right here and trade sideways and then rock it up from here absolutely so on the contrary side of things based on what i just shared with you right now there may be a lot of people that are like okay well i'm gonna wait for xrp to get down within these levels before i buy any now let me explain why that is foolish thinking because i do hold xrp still i'm not selling xrp even though i think it's going down now in order for me to accumulate more based on what i already have allocated to xrp for the long term I would personally need to see XRP hit these levels because the largest position in my portfolio is XRP. I don't really need any more XRP right now to benefit from this bull run. Sure, I would love to accumulate more. And actually I'll share with you guys a plan that we have for every single person in the community to accumulate more XRP before this bull run ends. That way you guys can have your bags packed as XRP bottoms out before we see the eruption in price. Because if it's anything like what we saw in 2017 or even just a fraction of that guys i mean that was absolutely insane if i were to measure how large that rally was by the end of the bull run it was over 60 thousand percent we don't need to do 60 thousand percent to make life-changing money here even if xrp just goes back to its all-time high this bull run I'm gonna be happy. Now, I do think it's gonna go much further than that, and I'll explain my long-term price prediction by the end of this video, so hang tight for that. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. But first, the early bird list for our crypto education platform is closing. You have seven days, four hours, and 16 minutes left to get on the early bird list. You can go to bullrunners.com, click the button on the page, register for the list. You're gonna get access to our top altcoin picks, market analysis, our crypto inner circle, and some bonuses by being on the list first. We've been working on this for the past year or two. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. That way you can plug in with our research team and see what we're all doing with our portfolio before these videos come out. Now, breaking news just hit with Nate Silver's election model and national polling average suggesting that Donald Trump has an 85% chance of winning the election on Tuesday. By popular vote, Harris is 48.5% leading Trump, but the most important thing is the electoral college odds. Trump is at 85, Harris is at like 14.6. So Silver's model says that because of the electoral college, Harris must win the popular vote by two to three points to make this a truly toss up 50 50 race anything under two to three trump is the favorite so if the popular vote ends up as silver's polling average it would take a monumental realignment for trump to lose and trump just posted this saying if kamala wins you are three days away from the start of a 1929 style economic depression if he wins you're three days away from the best jobs the biggest paychecks and the brightest economic future the world has ever seen now of course he's going to say that because he's got to be extremely one-sided to make everything seem like it's going to be incredible under his leadership which is how you campaign but regardless of whoever gets elected the markets are more so going to follow global liquidity and what happens with the federal reserves fomc meetings coming up over the next six to 12 months now their next meeting is the sixth through the 7th that's coming up in three to four days. And then they have a meeting before the end of the year, December 17th through the 18th to discuss where Jerome Powell comes out and talks about what he's gonna do with the effective federal funds rate. Because over the past year, since August of 2024, they just started dropping the rates. Now, how low will these rates go? Well, the expectations based on the CME Fed Watch tool is saying that there's a 98.9% expectation for the target rate to be between 450 to 475. Now, currently the rates is 475 to 500. So they're expecting a 25 to 50 basis point rate cut virtually guaranteed. Now, obviously it's not hundred percent guaranteed because it's 98.9, but that's virtually hundred percent. And this is due to the Fed thinking that they have inflation somewhat under control based on their current economic data on tradingeconomics.com. This shows 2.4% inflation in September, 2.5 in August. So it has been working to a degree. Now these numbers are a little fudged because for them to track inflation, they could just track a basket of goods that they want when other items might be drastically inflated. And then through price gouging that these businesses do to make more money, to blame it on inflation is a scapegoat. So these numbers aren't hundred percent accurate. It's actually higher than this, but just based on the feds data, what I'm showing you guys right here, if inflation comes in lower for October than it did in September, then I would expect the fed to have another rate cut in December of 25 to 50 basis points. And if we look at what the Fed Watch tool expectations are for December. 82% are expecting 425 to 450 basis points. 
17 percent are expecting the target rate to be 450 to 475. So when the Fed cuts rates to 450 to 475, then the expectations is another 25 to 50 basis points right along what they're planning on doing for this meeting. Now, in October, consumer price index is scheduled to be released on Wednesday, November 13th. And so the inflation data is going to come in actually after they make the decision to cut rates. So the Fed makes a decision on their rates. Then they wait to see how it affects inflation. And then by then, it's usually too late if something breaks breaks and then they're left to clean up the own mess that they created in the first place. Today, I think we have governmental policies that are embedded in inflationary. And, <clears throat> and, and with that being said, I think we're, gonna, we're not going to see interest rates as low as right. people are forecasting. Now, this is a massive statement from BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, because if rates stay high, people are saying that it might keep pressure on borrowers and home buyers while benefiting big players who can write it out. It makes you wonder whose interests are really being served here. And so people are saying goodnight real estate. And the real estate market is crazy enough as it is when we look at the buying versus renting data in America, according to the visual capitalist here, the cost to rent compared to the cost to buy is drastically disproportional. So we might see people rent for longer as more homes go on the market for sale and there's no buyers. This is gonna lead us to a massive real estate market crash and so, this is why institutions are starting to pour money into crypto and BlackRock has been buying more Bitcoin than ever before. Because in the past, you can see what happened during the 2006 housing bubble, even in 1981, how this blue line in here, which is the cost to buy, rose more above the cost to rent. And in order for more people to decide to get in the real estate market to buy homes, rates would need to come down. So as Fink is saying that rates aren't gonna go as low as everyone is forecasting, then this could mean bad news for the real estate market. Now, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, warned that the Fed does not seek or welcome further cooling in labor market conditions, basically meaning the current unemployment rate, the peak, recently was 4.3%, which is still fairly low by historical standards compared to the past, but it's a now a line in the sand that if crossed will likely trigger a policy response. So they're watching 4.3, 4.4%, he said in his last meeting. And if we cross above 4.4%, then that's where things could get very, very dicey. So as long as we stay below 4.3%, then the Fed is most likely going to continue their rate cutting at 25 to 50 basis points. Because right now we came in even for October at 4.1%. We're going to have to wait a whole nother month leading into December to see what the unemployment rate is going to come in at. And the reason why this is important is because if we zoom out to the max, the unemployment rate has been one of the main indicators that shows us recessions because you can see this gray boxes right here these gray boxes is the time that recessions were counted in and this is when the unemployment rate was spiking up so right now since unemployment is low at 4.1 percent we can see the last time that we went through a recession was obviously 2020 COVID. It was a quick spike. It was rapid. Every single other time between then, it took a little bit of time from December 2007 until July of 2009. That was two years. This period was from March of 2001 until December. That was nine months. This one was July of 1990 until roughly like March of 1991. So like eight months. And then the further back we go, the data is going to be a lot different because just the gross debt is higher. The data is different these days than it was back then because of quantitative easing, what George Bush did to save the economy in 2008. But if we zoom in right here, we can see that there is no recession right now. They're watching 4.3. If we start to go above 4.3, then the recession fears are going to heighten. Now, it's not a matter of if we're going to go into recession. It's when and what will that do to the stock market and the crypto market when that happens? When will the crash take place? And when should you exit the market so you don't get wrecked? Well, this is where we're going to pair up the Fed funds rate, the unemployment rate, and the S&P 500 index. And let's look at what happened when the Fed was cutting rates and when unemployment was spiking. The last time that this took place, you know, the unemployment rate was like right around six point something percent when the Fed was already cutting rates from July of 2019. So from July of 2019, the Fed started cutting rates and then the S&P 500 saw this blow off top about 200 days later. So there still was time before the unemployment rate and the Fed funds rate dropped off a shelf to try and save the economy. And then unemployment spiked from 6%, you know, all the way up to 8%. Now this is global unemployment rate. Obviously the United States unemployment rate is, is different, but global unemployment rate is higher than US unemployment rate right now. If we look back to July of 2007, when the Fed started cutting rates, 
we can see that it took until roughly like October for the markets to top out. And then the Fed continued to cut rates while global unemployment was bottoming out. It wasn't really until like October of 2008 when the markets was in a full fledged downswing that then unemployment started to spike up. So this is going to take a little bit of time, in my opinion, for global unemployment to turn around and go back to the upside right here in the middle of the screen that you guys can see to then start spiking up while the Fed continuously cuts rates over the next six to 12 months leading into 2026. So I think we're gonna see a big crash happen at the tail end of 2025, leading into 2026. And that's when we would see the Fed respond by potentially cutting rates rapidly even more, very similar to what happened right here, very similar to what happened right here to drop the rates back down to try and stimulate the economy. While we see the stock market chop around going into election, but eventually see another breach into an all-time high going into 2025. And then we top out from here and then we see the major crash start to take place in the stock market once this bull run is over so i still think there is time but we're getting very very close to this crash taking place now if the crash happens sooner and we're witnessing the top right now and then crypto implodes, the stock market implodes, the real estate market implodes, then there's nothing you could really do other than short the market to try and make money trading. That's why we have a contingency plan and we look for opportunities so you could be able to build your cash flow up regardless of whatever happens in the economy. So that way you can create true generational wealth. And one of the best ways to do that over the next 90 days is by helping businesses get money back on this lawsuit that Visa and MasterCard lost. For example, here's the back office right here. We've been sharing this for the past week. And as you guys can see, we've brought about 178 businesses that have done over $118 million in total credit card volume. These businesses are qualified to get back 1.9 million dollars and that's only for 56 approved businesses there's still like 120 businesses where their applications are going to go under review and you can get paid from this to have more money to put into crypto listen to this hey bull runners this is super time sensitive especially if you're looking to stack more crypto before the bull run is over did you know that visa and mastercard lost a 5.5 billion dollar class action lawsuit for imposing unfair fees on merchants and business owners. So if you own a business or if you know any business owners that process payments with Visa or MasterCard between 2004 and 2019, that's 15 years, you could actually be owed a refund of one to 1 1.5% of your total revenue from that period. That's a lot of money. For example, this business that generated 1.6 million in credit card revenue during those years is getting back $28,000. This business that generated over 7 million is getting back $93,000. And this business that generated over $20 million during those years is getting back over $320,000 thousand dollars that's money they didn't even know was on the table and all they did was fill out a form through the link below this video it literally takes less than a minute to see if you qualify but you don't want to wait too long because the deadline to file is february 4th 2025 so the sooner that you fill out the form below the sooner that you can reclaim what's rightfully yours plus if you don't have a business you can actually earn three percent by referring businesses that do qualify by creating your affiliate account through the link below so this is a no-brainer way to get money back in your pocket to use for your business, or if you wanna use it for crypto or other assets to invest in, you can do that. So click the link below, let's get you paid. Now, even if XRP or the rest of the crypto market dips, having more income on your guys' side will give you the ability to buy more so you can be able to have a larger position. So when the markets do explode for the next bull run as well too, by 2030, you'll be a multimillionaire. You can't just take your income from your job and buy into the crypto market and just do that. You need to have business opportunities that are low risk that can generate you more income on the front end. Now, this billionaire predicted Bitcoin when it was at $1. Why is he saying the US economy is dying? Well, it's very simple. We're facing record instability. Over 30 trillion, it's like $35 trillion now in US government debt, 2.2 trillion in unrealized bank losses, recently 300 billion emergency money created. These are four ways that the West is collapsing. The banking house of cards, Stanford University data reveals a shocking truth where 2.2 trillion in unrealized losses in the US banking system came in over the past year. That's more than the GDP of 185 countries. And some believe that many US banks are secretly insolvent. The next is the money printing machine. $300 billion was printed in days after Silicon Valley banks collapsed. That's like creating the entire economy of Singapore 
overnight. This isn't a solution. It's fuel for a financial inferno. And the result is a ticking time bomb of inflation that's going to rear its ugly head again. So when the government steps in to bail out these banks when they collapse, that increases the overall debt. And each debt category is a potential trigger for a larger economic collapse, like US government debt, you got student loan debt, credit card debt, auto loan debt. And over the next six years, it's projected to grow over $50 trillion. In 1980, the US national debt per household was around $39,000. Now, in 2024, it's over 260,000 per household, or 484,000 per child. At the time of writing, the US debt has surpassed the staggering $35 trillion mark. That's 10 trillion more since 2020. This year alone, the US will spend over a trillion dollars on just the interest payments alone. That's more than its defense budget and almost the GDP of Switzerland. So why is this a big deal? Well, it's because this isn't just a number on a ledger, nor just some wild facts. It's a very real problem and represents a mounting challenge to future generations. And it's not just America that's at risk. The exponential US debt is a crisis for the future global economy. If America can't pay its debts, it'll affect every single one of us. So that's why so many people are looking for the best ways to invest because they understand that the dollar, the safest assumption, is that the dollar is going to zero. That's what Charlie Munger said. And the Federal Reserve has a tightrope act to watch to walk here. The Fed promises a soft landing for the economy, but this billionaire is predicting that we're heading for a crash landing. He sees current policies setting us up for rapid inflation, not stability, and the Fed's balancing act is the end game that might be the economy's downfall. But it's not just all doom and gloom here because here's how Bitcoin and crypto could be the hedge against this instability. Certain cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, XRP, and then other projects have a max cap on the supply compared to the US dollar. For example, Bitcoin's fixed supply of 21 million directly counts counters unlimited money printing. This scarcity could prevent inflation and currency devaluation. As the government prints trillions, Bitcoin's value proposition grows even stronger every single halving. As the reward for miners that are mining the Bitcoin is cut in half every four years. We just went through a halving cycle. We're going through this consolidation phase right now. Roughly three months to 12 months after consolidation, we see a parabolic blow off top for Bitcoin. That's why I still believe there's time left in this bull run. I say that the people who find the signal Find it for the very reason that I put forward to you, that Bitcoin is, has fundamental value in the world because of its fixed supply, and it's ultimately solving the problem permanently of printing money. Where we've at, been at in these last four cycles of all this money printing, what I put forward to you is that we're in the exact same position. They are going to have to print more money than they ever had before, and when they do, more people are going to figure out Bitcoin for that reason. But for you guys in this room, you don't have to wait till the next uh, episode of money printing, you can go ahead and take action before the flood. Now, Bitcoin's decentralized nature makes it resilient to bank failures. No central authority can freeze accounts or bail in depositors, and each user is virtually their own bank if you have self-custody of your crypto and you don't just hold it like a Coinbase or a Binance account. This is going to revolutionize financial sovereignty in the area of banking uncertainty. The benefit of decentralization as it relates to Bitcoin is twofold. One, there's no off switch because it's by definition decentralized. Two, right, you can have uh, double spends of the same crypto, right? That's what proof of work does for us, is it basically guarantees that any uh, output in Bitcoin can only be spent once. In other words, your tokens can only be spent once. That was a really hard problem to solve that had never been solved before in a crypto asset, a decentralized crypto asset. And the reason that it was never solved before was because nobody ever thought of using every computer in the world to do things like mining, right? And that's why it's so expensive. That's why decentralization is so expensive. The opportunity, right, is to replace banking with a system that's better. Uh, and that's in two parts, money, meaning governments, and having you know deflationary assets combined with banking systems that aren't necessarily all allowed to do fractional reserve banking, meaning they're not allowed to lend money they don't have. And even though I'm more bullish on XRP long term, Bitcoin does enable borderless peer to peer transactions. XRP is faster, but Bitcoin bypasses traditional financial systems, potentially reducing global trade friction. Imagine instant low cost international transfers without intermediaries. Now this sounds more like XRP's lane of expertise and Ripple's lane of expertise because it's cheaper than Bitcoin, it's faster than Bitcoin. Bitcoin's more of a store of value, but this is challenging the dominance of any single national currency. Bitcoin's even faster than the banks, right? So 
Bitcoin is good for XRP. For XRP to do well, Bitcoin needs to do well. So the question is not if our financial system will change, but it's when and by how much and will we all be alive to see the fruits of the seeds that we're planting because there's been a lot of frustration around XRP taking off and when it will grow. Either way, digital currencies are going to redefine global economics and you need to be prepared for the reality of what's to come. Because if we look in the year 2000 compared to 2020, in 2000, there were approximately 8,315 FDIC insured commercial banks in the United States. By the year 2020, this number had declined to about 4,377, representing a reduction of nearly 47% over two decades. This decline is part of a longer term trend of consolidation in the US banking industry, driven by factors such as mergers, acquisitions, regulatory changes, you know, technology advancements as well. A lot of these banks didn't adapt and thrive to keep up. And by 2030, I asked ChatGPT, what will the projection of the number of banks out there be? Well, because it's been steadily declining since 1984, there were approximately over 14,000 commercial banks, which decreased to around 4,000 by 2000. 2020. So looking ahead, banks could decrease from 4,500 to around 2,500 within a decade, you know, suggesting a significant reduction by 2030. And similarly, a survey report by the financial brand indicates that 71% of financial executives expect a 25% consolidation of banks by 2030, with 85% projecting a similar consolidation in the same period. That's over a thousand banks set to go out of business, set to shut down, set to collapse, a combo of all of that. And where does that money flow into when a bank collapses? Well, Bitcoin rallied up when Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. You know, it gets congregated into the larger banks. These larger banks are making strategic partnerships with blockchain companies. It's the perfect storm of opportunity for crypto. Now, it does take some time because as you guys can see, when we look at Amazon stock back here in 2001, it was at 26 cents. So when and those thousands of banks were getting congregated from 2000 to 2020, that money was flowing into the stock market. Crypto wasn't around in the year 2000. It took until like 2008, 2009, really until like 2016, 2017 for a lot of money to flow into crypto. So crypto hasn't been around for uh, much more than a decade in terms of mass liquidity in the markets, right? Well, look at Amazon right here. From 2000, it was at 29 cents, and then it rallied up to over, you know, $100 by 2020. So that was well over a hundred X for Amazon. Look at Microsoft Corporation. Back in 1988, it was all the way down at 33 cents. Think about this for a second, guys. Even in the year 2000, look at where, where it was right here. It was at around two bucks three bucks and where is microsoft today it's sitting at 410 dollars this is what i think the fate of xrp is in the long term now i don't know how high it'll go but over the next 10 20 30 years i am treating this like my retirement plan right here because i could see xrp realistically like realistically at a hundred dollars or more like amazon at 197 or microsoft at 410 dollars just because of how much liquidity how much debt is going to be out there the transition from money from the stock market if the crypto market can just capture a fraction of the stock market the real estate market you know the foreign exchange market uh the you know anything right all the markets combined what is it right now it's two trillion dollars the real estate market is like 200 trillion 300 trillion 400 trillion somewhere up there the stock market is nearly what 100 trillion dollars or more and the crypto market at two trillion is just a baby it's just a fraction imagine what 10 trillion 20, 30, 40, 50 trillion dollars flowing in the crypto market is going to do for one of the top cryptocurrencies by market capitalization, XRP, over the next decade. It's going to be absolutely insane. The valuation of these companies right now are going to continue to grow. Like Apple is going to continue to absorb more money. Right now, it's at $3 trillion. NVIDIA is at $3 trillion. Microsoft is at, is at $3 trillion. You guys saw how much money flowed quickly into NVIDIA over the course of a year. So a company can explode relatively quick if they have superior technology. That's what Ripple has. They have superior technology. U utility reigns supreme in the macro. Now, in the short term, obviously, like there's hype cycles for meme coins and stuff to make money faster. And you guys can play those trades. And if you go to bullrunners.com, we'll show you how to play those trades so you can be able to like scale up some income, get some nice 5, 10, 15, 20 X's, etc. Then rotate that income back into the high conviction utility plays for the long term that you can just tuck away, forget about, 
hold for the next 10, 20 years, and then the valuation, well, let's just look at projections here, right? I make no guarantees, but if the top companies in the world, like Amazon, right, right now is at a $2 trillion market cap, in order for XRP to get to that, we need to look at where XRP is right now to understand what would XRP's market cap need to be to be at $100. Well, currently XRP's market cap is just shy of $30 billion and the price is at 50 cents. So if we just take 30 billion and multiply that by 100, that will give us a $3 trillion market cap. Now 100X for XRP would be roughly $50 at a $3 trillion market cap. Keep in mind, guys, that would be roughly where Microsoft is right now. But there's gonna be trillions of dollars in money printing that's gonna happen over the next decade. So the valuations are gonna be a lot higher for these companies. It's like people, when they were comparing Bitcoin to gold, it doesn't mean that Bitcoin's gonna replace gold and take the entire market cap. Like the market cap of gold grows along with the market cap of Bitcoin because the tide in global liquidity is rising. And so for XRP to get to a three trillion dollar market cap i think like apple or microsoft they would they could probably be at like a 10 trillion 15 20 trillion dollar market cap by then potentially again right it's not going to be exactly that but you guys can do the math here in your projections because when you look at how big an industry is that a company or a project like xrp is positioning themselves in they're tapping into real world assets tokenizing everything on chain they're in the derivatives market which is in the quadrillions they're in they can get in the real estate market ripple can virtually get in any market and the biggest one is is banking for an exchange, which is a trillion dollar a day market. So I think people are gonna be very, very shocked at how much liquidity XRP can absorb. The argument about market cap being like, oh, well, XRP's market cap would need to be much higher than what it is right now. And it's only at $30 billion. Look at the trillions of dollars that are in all these companies. And then look at the partnerships Ripple has, guys. I'm not here to hype this up. I really do think $100 is realistic. Now I do, I think it's gonna happen this bull run cycle. No, you know, I think XRP for this bull run cycle, if we just zoom in here, and we draw the Fibonacci retracement tool from the all-time high to the COVID low. Well, a full extension for XRP is like $14. You know, I think anywhere between the all-time high, $3 to $14 is pretty realistic. Anything above that, like I think $30 maybe, maybe up to $40. That would be an incredibly bullish scenario for this bull run. For people who think the XRP is going to go to like $100 this bull run cycle, it's a little bit delusional because, you know, you're basing it on conspiracy theories of a flip of the switch moment when it's not a flip of the switch that happens you know even back here with this rally it took over 275 days to go over 60 thousand percent now we could see something like that again i don't know how much liquidity is going to flow in but i would be more than stoked if xrp just makes it to five dollars this bull run cycle because i know i'm going to be alive a lot longer than this bull run and so even if it goes to let's say three bucks five bucks ten bucks whatever and then crashes back down then we have the best opportunity to accumulate more money outside of crypto to be able to buy that dip so we win either way and we do that by helping businesses like i just shared with you guys in the early part of this video get money back from what the large companies and the payment processors like visa and mastercard stole from them Hey bull runners, this is super time sensitive, especially if you're looking to stack more crypto before the bull run is over. Did you know that Visa and MasterCard lost a $5.5 billion class action lawsuit for imposing unfair fees on merchants and business owners? So if you own a business or if you know any business owners that process payments with Visa or MasterCard between 2004 and 2019, that's 15 years, you could actually be owed a refund of one to 1.5% 1 of your total revenue from that period. That's a lot of money. For example, this business that generated 1.6 million in credit card revenue during those years is getting back $28,000. This business that generated over 7 million is getting back $93,000. And this business that generated over $20 million during those years is getting back over $320,000 thousand dollars that's money they didn't even know was on the table and all they did was fill out a form through the link below this video it literally takes less than a minute to see if you qualify but you don't want to wait too long because the deadline to file is february 4th 2025 so the sooner that you fill out the form below the sooner that you can reclaim what's rightfully yours plus if you don't have a business you can actually earn three percent by referring businesses that do qualify by creating your affiliate account through the link below so this is a no-brainer way to get money back in your pocket to use for your business, or if you wanna use it for crypto or other assets to invest in, you can do that. So click the link below, let's get you paid.
So I'm extremely excited for you guys because not only do we have that opportunity over the next 90 days for you, but we are launching our crypto education platform to the general public in a week from right now. And so get on the early bird list, go to bullrunners.com. I will see you on the next video as we back up our truck all the way to the bank. We grab the bags, we pack them and stack them, leave no bags left behind because we believe the spending power of the dollar is going to continue to go down in value. That's a fact. Based on inflation, blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, cryptocurrencies have been going up in value over the past decade and over the next decade. Get ready for what's about to happen. It's going to be an explosion of epic proportions. So I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com. You know what to do, boss. Stay bullish.